Hello all, I Zatan welcomes you all to our YouTube channel A to Z Soft Tech. Here you will get educational videos related to NCRT subjects and technical subjects based on computer science. If you find our videos helpful to you, please like and share the videos, do subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to get updates about new videos. To get more clarity on the topic, watch the video till the end. You can reach to us using our email, WhatsApp and Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description box below the video. You can find our video using hashtag Zatinsa, hashtag A to Z Software. Now let's start with the topic. Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about data transfer schemes. Contents of the slides will be modes of data transfer and types of transmission in the modes of data transmission we have two modes to discuss and there are three types of transmission we will discuss all these in detail first of all mode of data transmission but data transmission means the flow of data movement of data in the form of bits okay Data transmission means that movement of data or flow of data. Flow of data. And it occurs between two or more digital devices. What is the digital device? Digital device is the device which communicates in the digital form. Means which process the digital number, which communicates in the digital number and which produce the output in the form of digital number. All those devices are known as digital devices. Types of data transmission. As we discussed, there are two types, parallel and serial. The serial is further classified into two categories, synchronous and asynchronous. So first of all, we will discuss about parallel. Parallel transmission. All the bits of a byte. Byte is a collection of bits. Eight bits called one byte. Bits may be small rega. Bytes B will be the capital one. Okay. <clears throat> All the bits of a byte are transmitted simultaneously on separate wires. It means that more number of bits, more number of bits, the more number of wires, more number of wires, which means if we are sending eight bits, then eight wires are used. If we will send 64 bits, then 64 wires will be used. Now, in this case, as this diagram shows, there are eight bits that are sending from sender to receiver that are sending from sender to receiver so here eight lines are used so here eight lines are used this is parallel transmission parallel transmission means the more number of bits the more number of wires required this diagram shows that eight wires are used simultaneously to transfer eight bit digital data if there is data of 64 bits, then 64 wires will be used. Now, what happens with this? The data transmission, the data transmission process completes fast, or we can say that the parallel transmission is very fast. Parallel transmission is very fast because it transfers data simultaneously. Because it transfers data simultaneously okay next advantages of parallel transmission first all the data bits will be transmitted simultaneously so time required time required for transmission of n bits will be one clock cycle sub <coughs> all the bits are transferred in a single time period so 
n number of bits will also be transferred in the single clock cycle that means this process is very fast that means this process is very fast second due to transmission in only one clock cycle transmission in only one clock cycle clock frequency can be kept low without affecting speed of operation means the clock frequency on which the operation is executing that may be low because that is not affecting the speed of operation speed of operation is happen only in one clock cycle so it is not depending on a clock frequency it may be low it may be high disadvantages of parallel transmission first transmission of n bits will require n number of wires now n bits and n number of wires it will increase cost it will increase cost so if we want to do parallel transmission then it is very costly process second with the increase of users then it is very difficult to handle them for example one to one transmission is possible 8 bit to 8 bit possible but one to n or n to n if n to n devices are there n to n devices are there then what will happen there are number of devices and number of bits so huge number of wires are required here similarly huge number of wires are required over here too so it is very difficult to handle them so these two are the disadvantages of parallel transmission and to overcome the disadvantage of parallel transmission we have serial transmission now what is a serial transmission in this only a single wire is used to transmit every bit only a single wire is used for transmitting n number of bits how it is possible all the bits of a byte are transmitted serially one by one serially means one by one one after another on the same wire there is a single wire and this single wire is used to send the whole data together in this diagram only one wire is used to send the 8 bit digital data advantages of serial transmission is only one wire is used it reduces the cost disadvantages speed of data transfer is slow as bit by bit is transferring okay if we have n number of bits then it will take n number of cycles okay there one cycle but n lines here one line but n cycles so cost is reduced and speed is low to cop up with the speed there is a need of increase in the clock frequency if we will increase the clock frequency then the speed will be high or improved now we have types of serial transmission here we have two types synchronous data transfer and asynchronous data transfer synchronous data transfer means at the same time means the operation is performing on a same time as the communication happens between two devices both the devices are active at the same time it is used in between the devices that match in the speed means let there is a device a there is a device b if both the devices are match their speeds nearly match not exactly match if their speeds are nearly match then we will use synchronous data transfer for example it is used in between processor and memory this type of communication happens between processor and memory no start and stop bits are used means it's a another logic of start and stop bit which is number of bits are sending together and 
start and stop bit like this is start and this is stop okay so here is no logic of mentioning this start and stop bit this logic will be implemented in the asynchronous mode synchronous mode doesn't need start or stop bits also there is no need of ideal time ideal time is a time gap between bytes like one byte is this another byte is this and here this is a time gap there is no need of time gap as well because all the bits are sending one by one together sequentially and both the devices are active on the same time so we don't need any start stop mechanism or any time gap to match their receiving and transmission clear we'll see with this uh, example like this here a sender here a receiver sender is sending bit by bit converting them in a block or byte it can be called as a block it can be called as a byte eight bits are together and this is sending this three bits shows like the five bits of this byte has already been received by the receiver this three bit shows that the remaining five bits has already been received by the receiver okay next is asynchronous data transfer asynchronous data transfer means at a regular interval of time at a regular interval of time it is used between the devices that doesn't match in the speed for example microprocessor and input output device in case of synchronous processor and memory here processor and io devices because their speed doesn't match at all to help receiver start and stop bits are used start and stop bits are used in asynchronous mode i will explain this in the next slide where we uh, will discuss using an example diagrammatically ideal time between the bytes are not constant first it is not constant and also it is used and it is known as gaps it means there is a need of ideal time it can be constant it may be constant it may not be constant means maybe this time gap maybe this time gap maybe this time gap it may be possible okay now see like this here the sender here receiver sender is sending receiver is receiving this is a byte at the start of the byte there is a start bit mentioning bit zero at the end of the bit byte there is a bit stop bit known as one this zero and one will tell the receiver that this byte has been received completely moreover in between the different bytes in between the different bytes there are some time gaps there are some time gaps they may be constant they may not be constant like here may be one second time gap here may be five second time gap here may be one millisecond time gap it is possible so what is happening why this time gap is used because it will specify that no more data is receiving means the data you have just received is the complete byte the data you have just received is the complete byte and next if the data is starting with zero after the time gap it means it is another byte okay next is transmission mode now transmission mode will tells the direction of the flow transmission mode tells the direction of the flow means from where to where data is traveling data is traveling like there is a device a there is a device b a to b b to a or bidirectional such type of mechanism is known as transmission mode it tells the direction of signal flow between two devices 
types of transmission modes here we will discuss three types of transmission mode simplex half duplex and full duplex simplex half duplex and full duplex simplex mode in the simplex mode only one device can send and other devices will receive only one device will send and other devices will receive means communication is unidirectional tv tower or radio example is tv tower or radio like your fm box will only receive the signal from the tower okay so this is communication mode is simplex mode half duplex mode half duplex mode means both the devices can transmit both the devices can transmit but only one at a time means there is a device a there is a device b it can be sender it can be receiver also device b can be sender or receiver but one at a time if a is sending then b will receive when b is sending then a will receive both the device can send and receive but only one at a time in case of simplex the difference is a will always send b will always receive b never able to send in case of full duplex mode both the devices a and b <coughs> both the devices a and b can send and receive the data simultaneously means on the same time a can send on the same time b can send on the same time a will receive on the same time b will receive so this is known as full duplex mode in this simultaneous transfer is there both can transmit and receive at the same time these are the references for my current slide ramesh has gone book mohammad rafi guzman and bahroz farooz these three books i have read for this slides thank you everyone well this is all for today thank you very much for your patience listening please feel free to ask for queries you can find our contact information in the description box just below the video Thank you once again have a nice day thank you